Good morning, folks. We've got hurricanes to monitor and a sun in a potential calm before the storm. Before we get into that today, you've been patiently waiting months for this. However, here are most of the speakers for Observing the Frontier 2018. Hello, everyone. I'm Katherine Davidson, CEO of Space Weather News. I'm pleased to announce some of the speakers and topics for the upcoming Observing the Frontier 2018 conference. More information will come in weeks ahead at observatoryproject.com. Of course, my husband Ben, who you watch each morning, will be speaking, updating the magnetic earth topic and speaking on space weather and human health. His childhood best friend, Adrian D'Amico, will be at his fourth conference too. He has been as active in the discussions on Kardashev scale extensions to type 4 and 5 civilizations as anyone. And in a father-son event, Dr. Adrian D'Amico will join us as well. One of the top ER doctors in Pittsburgh, assistant professor at Pitt, and the Director of Emergency Medicine at one of the top VA health systems in the country. He'll be giving an expert outsider's overview of the space weather and health topic and describing future studies to be done, one of our featured speakers. August Stunning will be back, also discussing health in two separate talks that follow and advance his previous talks at Observing the Frontier with new insight from groundbreaking cosmic health studies and a secret contributor to the lifestyle topic. Fan favorites from last year will be there as well, including Michael Claridge from the Sapphire Project, Eugene Bagashov from the Joint Institute for Power and Nuclear Research in Belarus, and Tony Rango, who has agreed to wrangle the maligned and misunderstood topic of geoengineering amidst an internet of a thousand theories. It was less than a year ago when many of you watched these images in the news and we were marked at the closeness of the blue coronagraph compared to the red C2 frame from SOHO making it the first line of sight for solar eruptions. In Hawaii, the Mauna Loa coronagraphs at the High Altitude Observatory are a potential game changer, especially since they are working on automatic detection of CMEs and solar energetic particle radiation storms and systems to bring us those images immediately after they are taken without the delay of satellite transfer like SOHO. Joan Burkpile is the principal investigator for the Cosmo K coronagraph at the High Altitude Observatory and manages Mauna Loa. She has a passion for teaching that is evident in her long record of outreach and student mentoring. She knows solar eruptions, she knows radiation storms. She was heavily involved in the corona observation projects during the recent American eclipse, and she has a front row seat for the discussions and breakthroughs that affect the world of space weather. We are pleased to announce Joan Burkpile as a featured speaker. Another featured speaker has been at the leading line of understanding solar magnetic activity and predicting solar cycles. She is blazing a trail that began alongside co-author and NASA legend David Hathaway. We have been following this work and the progress as future solar activity is on all of our minds. Dr. Lisa Upton has expressed a passion for expressing fascinating yet complex topics in simple ways that laymen can comprehend. We are pleased to have Dr. Upton coming to speak on the sun as well including how to forecast solar activity in the future. I am extending the pre-registration period for the weekend so that you can take advantage because all pre-registration attendees are entered into a drawing for free hotel stays at the event center. See you in the desert. I better watch out. I think my wife might be better at that than I am. Pre-registration extended through Sunday. Anyway, we are back at our star now. Utter silence. Plasma filaments begin standing on the eastern limb towards the end there, so let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star in 193 angstroms. You should easily be able to discern that no large flashes or ejections of material jump out at you. We indeed have seen the solar flaring return to what we expect to see at solar minimum. Well, over at the eastern limb, we do see a sizable plasma filament amidst what appear to be umbral magnetic fields. The plasma filament and the coronal hole around the corner are more important than these sunspots coming up there, and indeed the big one that gave us the X flares last week is still five or six days behind this one. Solar wind here. Purple is the plasma speed, and apart from the cosmic ray errors Discover is becoming famous for, we are still inside the coronal hole stream, lasting a bit longer than most, and reinvigorating the geomagnetic storms again last night. Minor localized electrical trouble is possible at KP6. The culprit of the enduring stream is that northern coronal hole. You can see how much space it takes up, so the extended stream impact does make a bit more sense in this perspective. 
Anyone living or vacationing in Baja, the further south you are there, the better chances this system will affect you. Fair model agreement here. But that is not so true in the Atlantic, where we strongly caution against putting weight on models more than 48 hours out, but still, this is too interesting not to show it. This is the GFS model, and Hurricane Jose is shown skirting the coastline. Remember, the western side of storms is never as bad as the east. The loop in the ocean is now gone from the models, and it runs north as a new system sneaks in towards the U.S. coastline at the end. Again, please don't put too much stock in these ahead of time. But the European models are suggesting almost the exact same thing is going to happen, just with a Carolina impact at the end instead of Jacksonville. Folks, we are on La Nina watch. The forecasters are seeing cooler waters across the central Pacific, and all models now forecast a continued move away from El Nino. I might suggest that the actual outcome within this forecasted range will be driven partly by the sun, with lower activity on the long term forcing La Nina conditions. Let's also quickly peek in on the Greenland 2017 summer ice melt season. Funny thing happens as we watch this run, you see red disappearing towards the end of the melt season, and in fact, there is a small gain in ice mass that took place in Greenland compared to this time last year, and it was fighting El Nino the whole way. Folks, you heard it, pre-registration extends only until tomorrow. You heard all those topics correctly, including the what did he say you may have had during the Rango Wrangle. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps, null school run, and shots of our star to close. Fly on the Wall podcast will be coming up in just a few hours, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.